Yeah, it's interesting you bring up the internet because I was I was literally about to mention it and say oh, I think well, yeah. almost internet in, internet English is more different than American English and and British English. I'd say at least. Well, the, the one thing I've learned about all my studies of the internet is uh, uh, that it's so difficult to generalize uh, about it because it changes so fast. I mean, mm -hmm. it's extraordinary, really. And, and now there has to be a disclaimer from me. Um, I haven't really studied the uh, language of the internet in the past you know, six or seven years, really. And as a result, I have no idea what's going on out there at the moment. I mean, I have never ticked or talked, uh, for instance. Um, <laughs> I, I just don't know what's going on out there. This is your generation, Stay off not it. mine. Stay off it if you can. <laughs> yeah. It's a very insidious <laughs> platform. It's made to addict you. Yeah. <laughs> right. But when I was doing it, um, the, the thing that struck me was how difficult it was to keep pace with the, the rate of change. Uh, the example that comes to mind always for me is, is Twitter. Twitter mm -hmm. arrives in 2006. Um, it should never have uh, arrived, really. P people in 2005, if you'd said to them, hey, we all know about text messaging. Um, it's really cool. Uh, but text messaging is between individuals. Uh, so wouldn't it be a good idea to put your text messages on the Internet so that everybody can see them? And if you'd said that in 2005, people had said you were crazy. But that's what Twitter was. Twitter was SMS for the Internet, a short messaging service for the Internet. So instead of me saying to you, I'm eating cornflakes, I tell the world that I'm eating cornflakes. <laughs> and the world wants to know. And, and this is this is what made Twitter so successful. Now, at the beginning, you were given a prompt, and the prompt was, "What are you doing?" And mm. you would say, "I am on the train. I'm eating cornflakes, or whatever it happens to be." Now, linguistically, there were immediate consequences of that. If I ask you the question, "What are you doing?" you're going to give me back present tenses, first person pronouns and all sorts of other constraints because of the nature of the question. So I was studying, like a number of others were, Twitter language in 2007, 2008, and making generalizations like the one I've just mentioned. Then, in November 2009, Twitter changes its prompt, and it becomes what's happening. And so as soon as that happened, you can imagine the linguistic consequences. What's happening means... Mm. He's doing something. She's doing something. They're doing something. Third person pronouns come along. Future forms of expression, past tenses and things all come in. And the language character of Twitter changes quite dramatically in a very short period of time. So the poor old PhD students who were studying Twitter in 2007 and 2008, thinking they were doing cutting edge linguistics, suddenly realize that they're actually doing historical linguistics because <laughs> it's all over <laughs> their period. I mean, and it's, it's moving even faster since. now. Hey, what's that? I said it's moving even faster now probably than it was then. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it certainly is. Um, it didn't stop there. Um, it's still what's happening as a prompt, but other things have come along like hashtags and, and all the rest of it, mm. uh, which yeah. various classificatory device. It is moving still very fast. And it only takes a, a political change like Elon Musk coming in and taking it over. And suddenly different criteria are used. Uh, maybe the length of the of the entry varies. You're now able to produce longer sentences than you were before. It's all, it happens so quickly. You're right. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think there's so much more to it than just the change in vocab and syntax, because I was having the conversation with, I was having a conversation about deleting TikTok with my sister the other day. Like I said, I think it's like an insidious platform. You end up scrolling <laughs> on it all day. And her reason actually for not wanting to delete it was really interesting is that there's a whole set of cultural references, which you end up missing out on of the popular meme of the day or, or whatever video is going viral. And that quotation of that, is quite common in everyday humor, at least among young people. And mm. so you'd be missing out. You know, it, it's almost like an identity. It's kind of like a, 
a, a metaphorical country or a metaphorical geographical location where people go and you share that culture. And if you're outside of that, then you're missing out in the same way that language, for example, uh, in England, or it has specific words or cultural references. You're, you're, you're really missing out on like a, on yeah. that aspect as well. Yes, you, you are. Am um, I now in the field of pragmatics, I, I guess, really, rather than anything else? Uh, uh, pragmatics is, you know, the study of the choices you make when you use language, the reasons for those choices and the effects that the choices convey. And uh, a big dominant element in the whole field of pragmatics is, you know, cultural presupposition, cultural background, cultural expectations, um, the things you, you can take for granted when you talk to somebody else and you don't have to explain them, or the things that, as you say, you feel you're missing out of if you um, distance yourself from that particular aspect of the community. Um, yeah, this is very important, and not just in English, of course, but, you know, back to code switching and everything now. Um, the uh, The different online communities have their rules is probably too strong a word, certainly have their conventions. And these conventions are, once once you're a part of that community, you have to accept them, otherwise you're considered to be an alien, get out, um, or you find yourself not being able to understand what's going on in the group because you lack the, the correspondences that you were just referring to. I mean, this has always been the case. Mm. I remember back in the... 1980s, uh, when chat groups were first being developed, um, this was happening then. I'm remembering one chat group now, uh, I, I talk about it in language on the internet, where uh, it was all being done through, through, uh, through type, of course. And at one point in this particular group, somebody mistyped the word computer, and it came out as comp tour. And everybody thought this was wonderful. And then and everybody started to use it. And before you knew where you were, CompTOUR was the standard way of spelling computer for that particular chat group. Along comes a newbie into that chat group and spells computer in the standard English way. He's condemned by the rest <laughs> of the group for not spelling computer properly. <laughs> <laughs>